and I learned that work ethic from my family. You know, I mean, like my parents worked two and three jobs and, it, you know, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing to have. And definitely I'm so grateful to have that work, work ethic. Uh, but at the same time, we need to, I needed to remind myself that family comes first, always, no matter what. Welcome to Set Apart Podcast. My name is Oscar, and today we have Lorena Inclang from uh, NBC and Telemundo, somebody that uh, we got to meet briefly uh, last year. And from the time that we met, I said, uh, you know, if when we start the podcast, it would be great that she can be on. And from the day that we met, you know, I think that uh, you were very uh, warm and kind and uh, very, um, like, you were so careful, like, of how you even talked to us and how you were just trying to... Uh, Know, even giving us the opportunity to even be on TV. So yeah. uh, I think that was awesome. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Oscar. So good to be here. I remember that day. It was a Thanksgiving, right? It was a Thanksgiving drive. Yeah, Thanksgiving you drive. Guys we're, were giving, there. Yeah. giving uh, turkeys, no? Turkeys? Yes. Turkeys and food. That's right. Yeah. And it was in partnership with the uh, Miami-Dade uh, school police, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a cool event. I, I, really, I actually really enjoyed it because I... It's, I'm so grateful that you said that I, that I came off, you know, warm and kind because I... One of the things I love about my job is meeting people and going out there. I'm definitely the epitome of a people person. Mm -hmm. I love meeting new people, talking to them, having conversations. So, um, yeah, it was it was great to meet you and your team there. Oh, and now you're in our mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Because I feel like I'm in like your realm. You know, yeah. usually you're the one that's interviewing people. Uh, mm -hmm. How does it feel to be on the other side of uh, of the table on this one? It feels really cool. I think this is my. First time on a podcast? Yeah. No, you know what? I in my previous uh, market, mm -hmm. I did a cold case podcast, but this wasn't the setup. It was completely different. It was it was like I don't know, kind of uh, the beginning of podcast podcasting. Mm -hmm. But this is really cool, and I'm a huge podcaster. I listen to so many different podcasts, so I'm really impressed with your setup here, and I think it's great what you're doing. Well, I appreciate it, and I think mm -hmm. it's great about the podcast because I thought it was so cool that the podcast is about like cold cases and mm -hmm. like really trying to bring justice for those mm -hmm. families that, you know, the case kind of just, there's a lot of things that happened they, and, and the detectives stopped doing it and, and you were, you know, you were trying to like, mm -hmm. you know, champion that. How, yeah. how was that? And I, that's one of my, uh, the areas of, of my job that I really, really, um, enjoy covering. Um, it is so important. I get to meet a lot of family members who feel like their loved one's case has been forgotten. Um, I can't tell you how many times I speak to family members whose cases have gone cold for 10, 20, 30 years. And we were the first ones to approach them to say, hey, you know, we want to put a spotlight on this case to see if we can help. Uh, recently, there was a, a case that I did that that was solved. Um, well, how did that feel? It was, it feels amazing because I, I also developed a bond and a connection with the family. And, um, I, I get goosebumps because like, I feel like, <laughs> and I may be, you know, but like, I almost feel like that's why you do it, you know, yes. like, like you don't do it for any reason, but to, to help these families. And so it to actually like pay off. It must've been, it, it, it felt really just, it, it was a big deal for me, for them to tell me that, you know, you were the only one who cared or thank you so much for taking the time. And I take so much pride in sort of putting myself in other people's shoes and feeling their grief. And um, as somebody who has felt intense grief before, I understand uh -huh. what, what that is like, you know, and I, and I have enormous empathy for for these families who the hardest part for them, obviously they just went through something horrific and their loved one was murdered. But what's really hard for these specific families is that they don't know who did it or why. And they go years, sometimes decades without any answers. Without any closure. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's an interesting word because that's one of the things that a lot of families tell me that they, they struggle with that word closure because they don't feel like they will ever get it, even if they find out who did it. And even if that person goes to jail, because yes, they'll get justice, but their loved one's not coming back. Yeah. So, so it's, um, 
it, it's it's an interesting word that's that's used a lot, which you know I don't I, I totally understand why um, that came up because it, it is used a lot. But like doing cold cases has sort of taught me that they will never get closure. Wow. Yeah, it's tough. I was doing a little bit of research on you, and I thought that was uh, I thought that was because I. I I thought it was cool that you had a podcast, but then what the podcast was actually about was mm-hmm. was awesome. You know, do you think that you know you, that your younger self version knew that you would be you know a reporter and 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 doing what you're doing? I think my younger self was preparing me to be a journalist all along without mm-hmm. knowing it. And I, I don't know if you had this experience growing up, Oscar, but my parents uh, are non English speakers. Uh, they came from Cuba in the 80s. Um, they were already a little bit older. Mm. My mom was in her 20s. My dad was in his 30s when they came over. And my older brother was born in Cuba as well. And I grew up as my family's translator, which mm. I know probably a lot of your listeners can relate as a child of immigrants. You know, we we grow up being that voice for our parents. Yeah. And so I kind of realized that I've been informing at, as long as I can remember. Yeah. When I learned to read and write, I've been informing my family, That's translating crazy. things for them. So I think that's my younger self definitely prepared me for it. It wasn't until high school that I realized that I wanted to do it as a profession. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but before that, it, it, you know, my mom would always here's the letter that can can you read this for me or yeah what is it what do you need like you know whatever letter it was and yes. I think it's awesome because one thing is to do things but like something is like to really do it good and I was mm-hmm. looking at it and you even won the Florida Association of Broadcast Journalists Award for 2020. You know, like I thought Thank that you. Yeah. you know, I know it took a lot. Mm. to get to that how did that award even like how did that feel that award you know it's interesting because you know in journalists submit uh their work all the time to different uh organizations that recognize our our work and i didn't i hadn't really submitted any uh individual work a lot of times that i would submit it would be like a team effort this was the first time that i submitted an individual entry on just my stories and what i had done uh, through the year 2020, which, as we know, was the craziest year for everyone. Wow. And it was so tough. Um, and especially I, that year. Oh, my gosh. Especially that year. That was that was rough. But I, I was shocked that that I won. Um, and I'm just really just really grateful. It's nice. You know, and we, I don't do this work for the recognition. Uh, but it's nice to 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 see that, you know, my peers, because yeah. that's that's who selected me are there they they're the you. ones yeah exactly it's nice to see that from your peers right yeah, do you yeah. feel that way in the no we just won an award last year wow that's awesome from yeah. uh, among your peers uh right well actually from yeah i guess within our peers it was for the 2023 general contract through the award for the american institute of architects and it's the american institute of architects is yeah. the largest architectural um association wow in the united states maybe even in the world so um we won the mammy chapter so again, we, like Miami is all about construction and to be right. the, the general contractor of the year award uh, is kind of where I noticed like, hey, um, people are noticing us and maybe maybe we should just talk a little bit more about our success. And maybe it can motivate and, you know, and yes. encourage somebody. So uh, kind of uh, one of the reasons that podcast kind of started. Absolutely. No, that's incredible that you guys won that award and, and you know, given. But it definitely gives that closure, you know, yeah. like, that's why I thought it went, like the close like that was like the end of a mm-hmm. chapter that was like from the start and the hustle and the grind and the mm-hmm. and like that and then that's it like that closed the chapter and it started you know the chapter right now so yeah you, you keep saying uh, journalism but you're a reporter do, like yeah do you um is there like a transition from journalism to reporting or and talk to us a little bit about that well so the the i guess you can think of journalism as like the umbrella mm-hmm. and there are different ways, I guess, to to uh, inform the public. I'm a TV news reporter, but there's also a print reporter, mostly like for newspapers. There's also radio reporters. There's even now like digital reporting. But we all are, I you know, the vast majority I should have a broadcast journalism degree. <laughs> yeah. I know that we do at our at NBC six, you know, everybody who's a who is a reporter, an anchor, a producer, um, has a broadcast journalism um. degree, uh, and and so w- that that means that they're a journalist. And do you like uh, do you like being a reporter? I love it. Yeah, I love it. Do you ever get scared going out to like to a to, to a scene or like? Because sometimes mm-hmm. I feel like you know sometimes there are good things like when we met. It was a turkey drive. It was awesome, yeah. but. 
They're not like they're not all like that. No, no, they're not. That was that was a very calm, chill day. I really enjoyed that day. But today, actually, we had a little bit of a safety thing, but it was mostly it was it was there was lightning and thunder today <laughs> and uh i i we were we were sort of exposed and i i made the, the the decision to move our live shot underneath the roof because and right after we went under the roof there was lightning and, and thunder and yeah we we are always very cognizant of the safety aspect of it but i've been in situations where you know i've had i've had people run up to me during a live shot try to take my mic and scream obscenities in the mic uh -huh. yeah no, it's ridiculous. I know, I know. And then, you know, all you could do, this was when I used to work in Jacksonville. Um, I, once he handed me the mic back, I apologized to the viewers and I kept going. So at live TV, what are you going to do? Exactly. <laughs> you know, those are like small obstacles that you've, you know, you mm -hmm. faced that, you know, that day. But talk to us a little bit about the obstacles that you've gone through, like in your life and how have you overcome mm -hmm. them and, and how has it gotten you to where you're at now? Oh my goodness. Well, wow. Obstacles through, I mean, you know, uh, growing, I, so I grew up here in Miami. I actually uh, didn't grow up too far away from your studio. I am a Westchester girl, or as we like to say, which I did. I went to uh, Southwest Miami High, go Eagles. Um, and, you know, just growing up in, in, a, in a Cuban household, Especially around the time that I grew up, uh, which, you know, was coming up. I'm already going to age myself. I graduated from high school. And Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to do the math now. It's okay. I'm, I'm not ashamed. Um, I graduated from high school in 2005. Mm -hmm. And um, throughout my high school, middle school, I even like when I was in elementary school, um, I, my, my childhood was marked with trips to the airport to receive family members coming from Cuba. Mm. At one point in my house, there were like 12, 13 people living with us because everybody who would come from Cuba would stay with us until they would get they could get their feet, you know, yeah, settled, settled and and and, you know, have start get a job and get their own place. But um, people might be like, wow, that's a lot of people in a house. And yes, there were, you know, there was limited room, you know, Especially there was being like, a girl. Yeah, it was it was. But at the same time, I could see that as something as like a challenge, but I'm also very grateful for that experience mm. because I, I grew up very close to my cousins and I have one older brother, but I consider my cousins, my siblings as yeah. well. Um, and it was, it was, a, it was a great experience. And also it made me so incredibly proud to be Cuban American and just to see you know, the resilience of our people, you yeah. know, and what they've been through and the, the family separation that we went through for so many years. I, one of my uncles came on a raft in the nineties. Mm. And I remember going with my mom and my grand and my grandmother to go, it was like this building and there was like a list of names on the wall. And you would, you have to, you had to look for people's names on that list to see if your loved one made it to, um, to be picked up by the coast guard and taken to Guantanamo Bay. This was in like in, in the height of, of that exodus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, we would go and, and we would come home disappointed every single time we couldn't find his name. We couldn't find his name until finally my mom heard his name on the radio wow. and then we re we reunited with him. But there were a lot of days where I remember seeing my grandmother just bawling her eyes out because she didn't know where her son was. She didn't know if her son had drowned. Um, those things really mark you in your childhood. Yeah. And, um, Especially as a, yeah. like as a kid, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, but you don't really know what's right. happening. Like, you know something, something, your family's going through something tough. And also, you don't, you don't, you, you realize that not, not every family that you know is going through this, you know? Because I have a lot of Cuban-American friends, but... It, I, I didn't really, I guess yeah, I didn't. Yeah, now looking yeah. back, you're like, yeah. this wasn't like, you know, it wasn't your typical, right. like what you went through was different. Right, that's not normal, yeah. you know? And now when I left Miami to start my career and I met people from different backgrounds and stuff, I realized my childhood was very different yeah. <laughs> from, you but know. it made you, you know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. How do you manage your family, your mm -hmm. friends and all that? Because now, like, it's it's almost the same thing. Like, you know, life happens. There's mm -hmm. so, It's such a busy a season in our life and in our city, which is like the craziest city of yeah. them all. <laughs> How do you, as a somebody that's developing their career, mm -hmm. somebody that's, you know, as a reporter, like, you, you know, you're not like, you know, cualquiera, you know, like mm -hmm. you're somebody that is really in the, like you're, you're making important decisions and you're doing a lot of important things for our community, which is important mm -hmm. for you and your career. 
but at the end of the time, like you're still a daughter, you know, you're mm -hmm. still, you know, your friend to somebody. How do you manage all of that? Oh my gosh, such a great question. I, at the beginning of my career, I was like, work, 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 work. And I would miss things. I would I'll always, you know, you need me to cover that shift. I'll cover that shift. I'll, I'll work a double. I'll do whatever it takes. And I'm, and I, and I learned that work ethic from my family. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? Like my parents worked two and three jobs and it, you know, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing to have. It definitely, I'm so grateful to have that work, work ethic. Uh, but at the same time we need to, I needed to remind myself that family comes first always, no matter what. And I was reminded of that in a very, in a very difficult way because I, I lost my grandmother in 2020, not to COVID. She died from cancer, but COVID certainly affected everything. Obviously that year, even, even treatment, her treatment for cancer. And, um, I, I realized that, you know, I had missed out on a lot of family activities, um, you know, just being so, caught up. yeah, caught up and just making sure I, I have a, a, sometimes I tend to want to be a perfectionist all the time. Like I have to do it right. Mm. And then, you know, I, I have to, uh, my mom would always is somebody who, who sometimes says, you know, el trabajo viene primero work comes especially first. coming from Cuba. Mm -hmm. Like that's how they, that's how they were going to get out of the situation that they're in. Yeah. Oh, ex exactly. Yeah. Like everything was, you know, right. a trabajar, you know, a trabajar. And when you come here to this country as an immigrant, you, you're, especially your kids have to be successful. Yeah. Like there's no other option. We didn't, they didn't go through all the trouble that they went through to get to this country for us to not be successful. So there's a huge burden, you know, on our, on our, on our shoulders. But at the same time, I think that's what gives us that, that's sort of that, that push to, yeah. to, and that's why, you know, there are so many Hispanic business owners and, you know, like yourself too, you know, starting your own, bit, own business so young, um, because I think, you know, that's ingrained in our DNA, which I think is beautiful. But I, I have started to remind my, my mom, whenever she does say <laughs> that, I'm like, no, la familia viene primero. I'm like, the family comes first. She's like, no, yes, I know. But yeah, just make sure that's that, crazy, you know, <laughs> like know. it's, it's just the way that, <laughs> yeah you know, it's just the way that they've, uh, and I think that they did such an incredible job considering mm -hmm. the amount of like hurt and brokenness mm -hmm. that they have, you know, like I was, you were talking about how your, was it, you said it was your uncle that was on the list that you're looking for. Yes. And mm -hmm. I was, um, the other day I was talking to my mom and I was telling her, how did, when did you find out? Cause she was an orphan through Peter Pan. So she was an orphan for like almost five years. Oh wow. And, um, they said that, Hey, in March, uh, the parent, like that some parents are going to come. And the parents are going to be they're they're going to be set on the radio the names, and it was from like March first to like the end of March. Um, this is nineteen like sixty four, so she's mm -hmm. like thirteen years old, and, you know, like sixth seventh grade. And um, this American teacher would let her go to the like to the office, the principal's office, mm -hmm. and listen in the radio every single day for a month until she heard her mom and my, you know my grandparents' name, you know. Oh, wow. And it was like, oh my gosh. and every day she wouldn't hear her, her parents' name, you know, you know, and then one day on the radio, you know, it said, you know, their names and like, you can only imagine a 13 year old girl hasn't seen their parents in five years, you know, wow. the principal's office in American school. So it was just, when you said that, it was just like, it's just crazy. But that, all of that mm -hmm. is, you know, the reason why we, like, I work so hard, you know, like, is yeah. it not, then what's. I don't want them to ever feel like everything that they did, like in those, the, all that anxiety and the stress that they had was like for nothing, you know? Absolutely. And, and that experience, it's a burden, like yeah, you said, you yeah know? it is. And it's also, you know, it's all, a burden and a blessing, right? Because yeah. I'm, I'm great. It's a good burden. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's good. Right. Cause I mean, obviously I want to be successful too. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm not just successful cause my mom wants me to be successful. <laughs> I want to be it too, but it's also, I want to make them proud, Yeah, you know, but that experience that your mom had at 13 years old. I mean, how many 13 year olds, have a story like that, you know, it really is something that, that marks you and makes you, you know, makes you into the adult that you become. You yeah. Know, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to, geez, uh, we're going to have an episode on, on that and that experience because it's important. Yeah. What do you love uh, the most about your job as a, as a reporter? And cause one thing is to go into the station and have it, but you're like out there in the field, like yesterday mm -hmm. there was a fire and like, you're yes, like, oh my gosh. you know, you're like, how, what's the thing that you love the most about, uh, mm -hmm. about your job? Every day is different. And I love that. Um, 
there are days that are very, very tough. Like we've been covering this really tough story. Um, I just came to your studio from uh, Jackson Memorial Hospital where there is a gunshot victim there who was taken there in critical condition. It looks like they will survive, thankfully. Awesome. But uh, that among the other, the, the fire that happened at that apartment building. So this person was shot at that apartment building and then a fire happened there and it displaced more than 40 people. So now there are people right now as we speak who lost everything, everything that they own gone. They don't have a home. They're staying in a shelter. They've transported them now to a hotel temporarily. But I feel so much when I, when I speak to the people that I interview. And it's something that I definitely have to uh, sort of try to do things that help me with my mental health as well. So I, I, I definitely, you know, make sure that I work out and I like to read and things like that because I, I, I feel like I'm a sponge when I'm interviewing people because when I'm interviewing somebody who's very distraught and, and, uh, upset or going through something so difficult, I, I, I feel it. Yeah. I feel it. And, and I want them to know that I feel it too. And it's important to me. And I, I think, and I think that's what, mm -hmm. when I met you was a thing that I, um, you know, that stood out and set you apart from somebody else. Cause I've been interviewed, mm -hmm. you know, several times and it's mostly is very transactional, but you know, that care of it is like, you know, why are you here? Like, what's your mm -hmm. company about? Like, why are these, like, why are you, like, why are you passing out turkeys? You know, like, why is this <laughs> yeah. important to you? But, mm -hmm. we, you know, it's almost like the theme of this uh, podcast is like it's a burden and a blessing almost mm -hmm. because how to for you to like overcome that? Because at the end of the day, you you know, I feel like you take that home with you and it's mm -hmm. and then today it's you that do. and tomorrow you're going to wake up and then something else. Like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So just working out like. Absolutely. Let, like, and, and that's something I've started recently to get into because I, I would work out sporadically here and there, but now I've started like a very consistent, like pretty much every morning. Um, and I, I, I've realized that it really is true what people say about working out is uh, you, it, it, it's a mood booster. Yeah. And I, I've been feeling that now and it's helped so much because we, I do cover a lot of, a lot of tragic stories that, um, stories that, I'll, I'll never forget and families who I've met, who I still keep in touch with. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough, you know, to not take that home, yeah. you know? No, it's uh the episode before you, we had uh, Alex the Armas, you know, yes. and I told her, I don't watch the news. You know, I can't even watch it, you know, mm. and you guys have to, you know, go out there and like, actually like do it live. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's admirable to be honest, because I, I wouldn't be able to do it. It's, uh, and it's yeah. tough. It's, uh, cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of good news, but there's a lot of bad news. Right. I'm so curious. And I, I know you're the one asking the questions, but you can ask all the questions. Okay. I can't help it. Why don't you watch the news? I feel that, um, one of the reasons is I feel like a lot of them, I can't control the situation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like I'm carrying this burden and you might be able to talk to that person. You might be able to text the person that you just saw at Jackson Memorial say, hey, you know, I texted a couple of people and we want to maybe give you some clothes or you can mm. do something about it. Yeah, I can't do anything about it. I'm literally just watching it so that oh, I can know everything that's happening and I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And we and we just it's just it's just another burden that that I have to carry and it's almost like out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people have that same mentality where it's just like, it's just bad news after bad news. And there's a mm -hmm. war here and a war there. And you're talking about like, I have a two year old son and I hear these people like killing kids. Like, like I feel like the only thing I can do is pray, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, that's that. I yeah. feel like it, you feel like, you know, powerless and you're just, it, mm -hmm. it's, and it messes with your mental health. Like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we're, and it's sad because it's a, like a selfish part of me. I feel that I don't want to know what's happening, mm -hmm. um, but it's no. But it, I, it, I takes, get it. it takes it, it takes a toll on me. Yeah, you know, and it's and it's interesting because I uh, most of my friends will will say will pretty much echo what what you say as well. But it's interesting because like we're trying to reach people in different ways, especially millennials and Gen Z, because uh, 
as a millennial myself, you know, even I get my news sometimes from different uh, places like social media. Like mm -hmm. I'll, you know, I'll look and oh, I'll be informed by uh, whatever news outlet is posting something. Or on. somebody like you, you know, or like, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I think those platforms are super, super important, powerful, but it's true. I mean, I had, a, I had a friend text me the other day cause I, I covered a, a very sad story about a little boy who drowned in a pool and she texted me and she's like, I don't know how you do it. Um, and you know, I, it, I, I almost didn't really know what to tell her because, yeah, I mean, this and we read a lot of details and police reports and things that some details that that can't make air, you know, because it's just too, it's too, too tough, too tough, too graphic, you know, um, and it it is it is tough. And that's why I really make it a point to take some time for myself, get my workout in. Um, read something, uh, watch, watch a TV show. I, I really love watching so many different TV shows and podcasts. Lately, I've, I've, been watched, I've been listening to so many different podcasts. Love them. What's your favorite podcast? Ooh. Oh, well, Set Apart, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but lately, I've been really getting into one called The Diary of a CEO. Have oh, you yeah. heard of it? Yeah, I have heard of it. Yeah. I, I don't know how I found it. but uh, It's very popular. Yeah. And I just popped up and I've, yeah, that, that's one of the ones that I've been really into lately. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What do you think has been most memorable? Um, actually, hold on. What would you recommend or what, what advice would you give to somebody like me that says, hey, I don't want to watch the news because it's just mm. bad news? I think, you know, there's always, there's always a need to be informed. And the thing about why I feel like what we do is so important and why local news is something that is very, very important is because we're the ones that are going to be in that city council meeting. We're the ones who are going to be in the school board meeting, listening to all the things that might affect your child in your school or uh, if there's a tax increase and things like that. So I would just say I understand that so the news can be heavy sometimes, but um, if you just, you know, listen to maybe five minutes of your day of, of a story that is affecting your community or if you just want to look for an outlet or that is th that that is explaining something that is of interest to you from your community, um, it's super important because I know a lot of people follow national news, but the news that really impacts us is the local news. Absolutely, I mean this is your backyard and yeah. this is what's happening where you live. So uh, so I would say uh, just take a couple of minutes. It's all all you need to just stay up to date with what's going on around you. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, information is power. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the information, how are you going to make the right decision? Yeah, that's true. Especially with the amount of things going on. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So what's the most uh, memorable time that you've ever been like on a, like on a you know, scene? Like you're like, yes. like do you, does, does one like immediately come to mind? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? I've done really cool things in my career. and I'm so thankful. Um, the coolest is I got to fly with the Blue Angels. Oh, wow. And it was... In the in, actual thing? Yes. Oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Yes, we we hit seven G's and I passed out. I definitely passed seven out. Seven G's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish I, you know. Have you seen the videos that they're like? And then oh, like, that that was me. That was that, you. That was and me. And you passed out. There's a GoPro video, some floating around there of oh me God. passing out. We gotta find yep. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna put the link yeah. on that if we can find it. Uh, no. <laughs> it's under lock and key. Oh that, my gosh, it was so embarrassing. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that I definitely passed out. Even though we we did this thing called the Hick maneuver. Uh -huh. Have you heard of that? No. It's basically the pilot. The only thing I know about Jesus is from uh, the, watching the movie Maverick. So other than oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I learned that on average, we hit about three G's on a roller coaster. Wow. So imagine seven G's. And so, yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was an incredible experience. Uh, I got to be the reporter who was invited that year because every year when they, when they came to Jacksonville where I was, that they would invite a, a local media person. Mm -hmm along with uh, somebody else in the community. So I got to fly with a local teacher who was selected. That's really cool. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> but some of my most memorable stories all involve uh, the military mm -hmm. because I also got to stay on an aircraft carrier for 24 hours mm -hmm. and I got to see night flight ops on the flight deck. It was so cool. And it's just, there's something about the... The, 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 the American might, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. like these huge ships and these American, these big jets. And it's incredible what our men and women in uniform do. And it was really, really cool to be able to embed with them. Cause that's really what we did. It was like kind of like a sailor for a day program. Mm -hmm. And we, um, we did all the, most of the training that they go through, I got to do. And, um, 
And it, it was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. That was just well, it was just one of the experiences. I've also been on a different type of ship, and I've flown on an on an Osprey. We also flew for that aircraft carrier. They they transported us. Uh, it was out in the open water, so we had to fly on the aircraft carrier, and, and it, they caught us with like a slingshot, like as we landed. That's it was cool. like it was crazy. And then when we when we left, they also like did the the slingshot move like, that's off. crazy it was and insane. you went to the panama canal i think or i did i did yes was i went to the panama canal to cover when it was being expanded mm -hmm. um to cover to see how that would impact the ships that were uh going to jacksonville to jack's port that's crazy how, the deal. amount of experience that you've you know you've gone just you know being in journalism it's because mm -hmm. there's there's so many like like we're saying so many sad things but yeah there's so much uh there's so many cool things going on yeah there, and I absolutely think. and there's good news too i mean uh, we we also cover the good things, you know, and oh, yeah, I yeah. wish people could see that because uh, we definitely make it a point to to, you know, highlight people doing good in the community. So uh, it's not it's not all bad news. Yeah. How I, do you feel go waking up and not knowing like sometimes because you don't know sometimes where you're going? Correct. How does that how, how's that uh, situation for the most for part, somebody like, that's always OCD like you? I know. <laughs> you could tell. Yeah, I'm so OCD, but oh I have no gosh. idea where I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> That is such a good point. I didn't think of it that way. Uh, yeah, no, I guess I've just gotten used to it. I've been in the business for like 15 plus years now. So I've, I've gotten used to it and I know that things are very fluid and, it, you know, you got to make decision day of. So yeah. I knew what I was going to be covering today because I know I was on I was on yeah, the yesterday. apartment fire yesterday. So I, but know you I didn't gonna, know that the apartment fire was going to happen. Yeah, so. it, no, it, when I because yesterday I worked the night shift. So when I woke up, I. I started seeing all these things about the apartment fire, and then I knew when I was when I was going in that that afternoon that, that we were going to because it was the biggest story happening to yesterday, even today as well. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the um, oh long term, do mm -hmm. you do you feel like this is like something that's sustainable for you and your career? Like, do you feel like you can be a reporter long term? Is this something that you want, or what are you looking for in the future? Yes, uh, you know, I think I everything in you life. Got, is, hold on, you got me so like yeah. focused there. I completely <laughs> forgot where I was. I was no, like, what no, am no. I saying again? <laughs> Okay, that uh, that's the first thing that happens oh, in, really? <laughs> in the 20 something episodes. Oh my gosh. But do you feel, cause it's, it's hard, you know, mm -hmm. like sometimes you're like going in the car, you're doing your makeup, mm -hmm. your hair is a mess. You're like mm -hmm. bringing it up. You're coming out. Like, like you said, you almost got struck by lightning, you know, like, <laughs> well, we you know, I don't know if I almost got, I think, you know, we, yeah, but we wanted to be but safe. There's we so wanted... <laughs> much happening. You also don't know where it is. You wake mm -hmm. up late. Like yesterday mm -hmm. did night shift today during the day. Like, yeah. Is this something you think you could do long term? You know, I I do see myself retiring in this profession. I um, who knows? You know what what'll happen tomorrow? Uh, there's that saying, you know, uh, we make plans and God laughs, right? Yeah. But um, I I I do. I think I think I can. I hope and I pray that I can have longevity in this career. Um, do you feel I, that both languages help? Like, help? yes. How is, oh, how yes. is the whole having the two languages make you like you know set apart? You know, in your industry, that's a great point, especially for a set apart podcast. I mean, the reason why I I so so let me say this: I credit my entry into this profession to being bilingual mm. because I started off in Spanish language news oh. when I I left Miami to go to Texas to start my career on air, and it was for a Telemundo Amarillo position only in Spanish. And then from there, I went to Orlando and I worked for a Univision affiliate. So also only in Spanish. And then I transitioned wow. to English. You started Spanish. I started only in Spanish. Wow. Yep. Spanish language news. And it was, it was do interesting. You still, do you still report in Spanish? I do. Sometimes, sometimes you'll see my work on Telemundo 51, mm. uh, every now and then for the most part, I, I, I appear mostly on NBC six, but every now and then, uh, Telemundo 51 will call me up and say, Hey, can you do that story for us too? And I'll, I'll, uh, and maybe the same day, right? Change mics and like, yeah, we change mics now. and then you translate, but it is such a skill because not everything can be directly translated. You really sometimes have to massage it to Even make the culture. sense. Yeah, exactly. You, you have to just, and make sure it's a little bit, it, it's fluent and fluid. And so people can understand you. Mm. So it's not just a direct translation. You also have to keep in mind the, a few nuances of, you know, the community that you're covering. All right. Rapid fire. Okay. You have a couple seconds to answer. Oh uh, my goodness! First okay. thing that comes to mind, you uh, you let it rip. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what time do you wake up in the morning? Oh, okay. So if I am working the day shift, mm -hmm. which tomorrow I am, I'll wake up at six thirty in the morning to oh, go to the bad. gym. That's not bad. Yeah. Talk to me about your your morning routine. 
Okay, so lately I'm very proud of myself because I, I didn't used to always have this routine. But I'll wake up at 6.30, uh, get ready, do my little pre-workout drink, mm -hmm. and then get ready and go to the, to the gym. And I'll be at the gym for like an hour. And then after that, I'll come back and start getting ready uh, for the day. But I'll, I'll be listening to the news in the background. Mm -hmm. I'll turn on the news. Um, I'll put on the Today Show in the background. Or I'll have a, po a news podcast. Because that's a big thing now, too. There's a lot of news podcasts. Current news, like that day of. Current news, yeah. Wow, so a you're like getting ready. Yeah, as I'm getting ready, just listening to what's going on. And also, I'll be, I'm already looking at my email, to Even though my shift doesn't start till 9.30, I hey, I'm ready. already looking at my email way before that just to keep up with like what's going on. That way I'm, you know, not behind the eight ball when I go in. Yeah. When do you find out where you're going? So we have a morning editorial meeting. Every station has it at a different time. Uh, but that meeting is basically what sets the tone for the day. Um, that's where we pitch our stories. We come into that meeting. If I'm not assigned, then I'm most likely going to pitch a story that I think we should do today. Um, but we'll go around. It's 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 virtual, so we're all on yeah. teams, and uh, we'll talk about what what's happening that day and who's covering what. So I'll find out at that point. But a lot of times I find out before because I'll get assigned before the meeting even starts. Wow. So then I'm just hitting the ground running. I'll just. You know, sometimes I don't even have time to join the meeting if I have to go to breaking news or or something like that. It's rapid fire, by the way. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm taking too long. <laughs> <I'm stressing. laughs> favorite snack. Oh, favorite snack. Oh, my gosh. That's so hard. Oh, God. Croquetas. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Spanish reporting, English reporting. Mm. So English because it comes easier to me, but I really enjoy reporting in Spanish. What are you doing on your time off? Uh, what am I doing? Traveling. <laughs> yeah, you do travel a lot. Best hidden gem restaurant bar in Miami. Oh. If anybody knows this, yeah. Oh, really? No, I don't. I don't. I'm you still don't. exploring. No. I'm going to so many different places. I'm, you know, I, I just moved back like a year and a half ago um, after being away for like 10 years. So I am still Pick one. finding the good places. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh my gosh. I really enjoy going to Cafe La Trova. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love the live music there. Yeah, I just, it's it, it's the know. vibe. And the nostalgia. And, yeah. yeah. It's really cool. Dog or cat? Dogs. I have two dogs. Oh. Love cats too, but the dog. I, I have my two dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and your favorite part about Miami? Mm. Miami. Oh my goodness. Miami is, is more than a city. Miami is a feeling... It's a uh, something you you take within, especially for those of us who have left the city and then come back. We always find our way back to Miami. That's true. Some some way somehow. It's better than Texas and Jacksonville, or Miami. <laughs> I love it, right? Favorite TV show? You had mentioned that your TV show. What's your favorite TV show? Oh, okay. I love watching Friends. Oh, Friends is so good. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those like if you're having a bad day, just. And The Office. The Office. Is the Office. It's amazing. That's like my go-to show when I just need to disconnect well those are two good ones <laughs> yeah well that was officially the longest rapid fire we've had but it was it was <laughs> <I'm> so sorry <laughs> but it was awesome oh what do you think goodness. is one thing that i haven't uh mentioned or, or we haven't discussed Ooh, ooh. you know that that's a question that i ask people when i interview them really? i always say that yeah and and i didn't realize that that's not always yeah it's uh not always easy to answer um i guess Ooh, no, you put me on the spot with that one. I don't I don't know. I guess I guess it'd be good to mention um Yeah, listen. Imagine yeah. imagine in, in a couple of weeks this episode mm -hmm. comes out and you watch it and you're like, "Wow. I wish you would have talked about that." Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I guess I guess a good question would be, you know, what have I learned from the people who I interview? You know, cuz I feel like you know, I do go in, obviously into those interviews prepared with questions and things that I that I want to ask. But a lot of times I'm I'm leaving the interview with so much more, you know, knowledge and, and understanding of of something. And I think that's that's the whole point. Right. Like that's why that's why we ask the questions is to, to learn. Um, but I I'm, I'm just I, I'm really I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be somebody who can bear witness to to things going on in the community and be able to ask those questions. Yeah. But yeah. It, Cause yeah. they really trust you at the end of the day. And that's the key right there yeah. is trust. 
And well, and I hope that I've been able to build that throughout my career, just through the relationships that I've made and the people who I've met, uh, because it's extremely, extremely important. Yeah. Well, listen, I hope that you can uh, continue to do it. Thank and I you. think you're doing a great job. And I think that, you know, we're trying to do something similar here through our podcast. It's a, uh, I, I, I almost feel like there's a sense of like a urgency and almost like a cross that we carry through a podcast because, you know, we're like in the spotlight in our sense of it. And we are as a, an industry that is known for being, you know, scumbags and completely, you know, degenerates. Is that really the reputation? That's what they say. Really? Yeah. We're, wow. You know, they took my deposit and I they didn't get me back. They never mm. finished a job, you know. So, um, you know, we, we want to hopefully through this, you know, sense of journalism, like you say, yeah. you know, we can be able to, to give back to the community and, uh, and I, you know, I love personally the way that you do it because you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, we need people like you out there because somebody needs to talk to that, you know, that family that I saw today on the news, like he didn't understand like why somebody, you know, mm -hmm. uh, shot his, you know, his, his loved one. And I think that, um, you know, but there's also good times where I really appreciate the fact that you were there to let people know that, Hey, John Paul construction cares for the kids and they care about the school and they care about the community and they're here passing out Turkey. So it's right. like this, like double-sided coin that. You know, they're both they're both awesome and they just they're just very different. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that you get out there and you do that for the community, because at the end of the day, you know, that's all. What is it all for if it's not for the community? It's all for. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. But thank you for coming. You did thank an incredible you. job. Hopefully when this episode ends in like a minute, you can tell me everything I did wrong. <laughs> and no, it's okay. uh, I love you were great. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, uh, we hope you learned something today and uh, maybe you want to go into journalism or communication or be a reporter and uh, you can uh, email her uh, directly. You can go to Lauren Klein. You actually can go to her Instagram and yes. through her bio, you can get mm -hmm. her email. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And uh, like you said, information is power. That's right. <laughs> thank you, Oscar. Well, thank you for coming.